Hi, I'm Rich with Two Wheels Big Life, and I want to do a comparison of the GS and the GSA in this video. So hang tight, get into it. We're Rich and Chris. We hit the road in April of 2020, traveling on motorcycles. But remember, it's not what you ride, but that it's your ride. So make it an adventure. So let me talk about the similarities between the GSA and the GS bike. The similarities are is they have the same wheel, same wheel size, same engine, same transmission. So it has the same horsepower, same torque, same engine. Both, both of these bikes have those similarities between the two. Let me tell you about the differences between these two from what I've learned. When we first bought these, this bike, this GSA, we really thought the differences, or really the only difference was, is that it had more crash bars and a bigger gas tank. And, and we knew that it was gonna be taller. You know, we knew, we knew it had a little more off-road capabilities, but man, were we wrong. There is so many different, little different things about this bike that really stand out after ridden both of them now uh, as much as we have and it's really just depends how what kind of bike you want to get and what your style of riding is one of the main differences is besides the gas tank okay the gas tank is is 7.9 gallons of gas on the gsa compared to the 5.3 on the gs so this one says it can do 350 miles when i fill up the tank and this one here says i can only do 200 let's be real here unless you're traveling in a country that has gas stations few and far between in the United States, you're not gonna run out of gas with 5.3 gallons of gas. Can it happen? Absolutely, we've done it ourselves. And who's gonna sit in a saddle for 350 miles? <laughs> That's what I look at, I giggle every time I fill up this tank. Another difference is the suspension travel. The suspension travel on the GSA has about a one inch more clearance. It has a little bit more uh, travel in the suspension than the GS. Also the seat height. The seat height different is, I believe it, 33 and a half on the GS and 35 on the GSA. So if you're vertically challenged and have a sh or have a short end seam, both of these bikes, they make a low version and the seat will go up and down about an inch, but it's even the low versions are still tall. So I have a 32 inch end seam and I'm six foot tall or right at six foot tall. The older I get, the shorter I get. Both bikes, I can flat foot on the ground and same with Chris. Chris can sit flat foot on with both of these bikes, but they still are very tall. Another difference that I've noticed is that is the rake angle of the front forks. So what is rake angle? Rake angle is the degree of angle from the steering yoke. So when you're on top of the bike and you're looking down at it and then where it steers, that's your steering yoke, that angle and the center of your shaft on your front wheel. So that angle difference from vertical, that's the rake angle. The GSA is 8.3 and the GS is 7.5. So in other words, the GSA has a steeper rake angle compared to the GS that has a taller rake angle. So with that said, that changes the way the bike handles. In, in my opinion, the GSA feels more like a touring bike, the, a big touring bike that you can take off road. You can, you can get it off road. The GS has a shorter rake angle, so it feels more like a sport bike into the corner with sort of more of a dirt bike where it's, it doesn't have, it's not as laid back. The GS, you tend to want to sit back more and you can feel the more bike out in front of you compared to the GS where it feels like the, there's more bike underneath you. So if that makes sense. But that's the things that I've noticed really between the GS and the GSA. This GSA is just a big bike. It is a, a large machine and it's awesome on the road. Taking it across country, taking it on long trips, this thing's a dream. The GS is the same way. It's just, it handles different. You can just feel more of a you're, you, you sit up more upright and you're, you feel like you're more in the bike than kind of cruising on the bike between the two. Okay, so now these are just my opinions and what I've learned from riding these bikes for as long as we have. This bike has 20 some thousand, 24,000 miles on it. This bike has 11,000 on it now, 12,000. I put 7,000 of those 12,000 on this bike. So I think I have a little bit of experience I can show you between the two. All right, so to sum it up, to get, let me give you my personal thoughts on whether you should purchase a GS or a GSA. It really depends on what your riding style is and what you're trying to do. And also your abilities. If you are a very extreme dirt bike rider, and want to hit the adventure and go up some real gnarly stuff and you have that ability, this GSA with soft bags is just a dream for you guys to go up these big roads because they really are like tractors. 
the GS is feel is going to feel much smaller. So don't look at it as, well, this the GS is less expensive than the GS, GSA. There really are two different riding styles and you need to be aware of what it is that you want. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and hit us up on Patreon. It really helps out. In show notes, the episode, this episode huh? is aim for a rock. <laughs> and, and why are we aiming for a rock if we So fall? we don't end up in the cacti. That was the main thing. Good golly. There you go.